is one global leadership series powered by Neom. It's time to draw the line. Hello and welcome to Beyond's global leadership series. With me today is the Prime Minister of Nepal, Mr. KP Sharma Oli. Prime Minister Oli, welcome to Beyond. Thank you very much. What should I call you, Prime Minister or Caretaker Prime Minister? I'm not Caretaker Prime Minister, I'm Prime Minister. There is no provision of Caretaker Prime Minister in our constitution. And in uh, just one condition, uh, Prime Minister will be Caretaker. If, uh, unfortunately, Prime Minister's position is vacant, then in such a situation where there is no parliament, in such a situation is Prime Minister's position vacant, then the senior minister will take care of the government and he will be the caretaker uh, Prime Minister. Yes, these are interesting times for the government of Nepal. Yeah. And I'll come back to uh, Nepal's politics in a bit, but I want to start with what you said vis-a-vis -vis India. Uh, you said we are working to deepen ties with India based on sovereign equality. Yes, of course. I am always telling that uh, the countries may be smaller or bigger in size and population or advance or backward in uh, development process, but uh, the sovereignty of all countries are equal. Indeed, and, and uh, no one can argue with the idea uh, or the fact that every country's sovereignty uh, is supreme, but the fact that you've had to add this qualifier, is there a, is there a reason you felt the need to mention this? Yes, uh, we want to remove all kinds of uh, inferiority complex, complexes from our people. Similarly, we want to draw attention of our neighbors also, not to take any complex that may be superior, superior complex, superiority complex too. There should not be any type of complex between the countries, between the neighbors. Both neighbors have superiority complex? No, no, I am not alleging like that. This is not allegation, but uh, there should not be. And I want to develop our friendly ties with both of our neighbors. Where are no problems at all. Right. Uh, do you make this concept of sovereign equality, which I totally agree with, a prerequisite in your engagements uh, with the other neighbor as well, namely China? With both neighbors, uh, we talk in the same way, and uh, in today's world, while, while we are talking, I am talking with you, and it goes everywhere. And if I hide something, and if I talk something about uh, anybody else, that uh, they to listen, that will not hide. So, talking with you, or talking with him, or talking with anybody else, in the same language, that works. Otherwise, cheating somebody, telling somebody something else, and uh, with somebody else, talking, something otherwise, that doesn't work. You, you said Indian encroachment, the issue of Indian encroachment, and we will get them back, the areas that you said have been encroached by India, through diplomatic talks with India. But the map of Nepal was altered uh, even while diplomatic talks, I understand, were on. So is there a rethink, or are we talking about other areas? We are talking about that very area of Limbia, Dura, Lipulik, and Kalapani. And there is a little bit dispute in Susta also. In other places, if there are small disputes, that uh, those di disputes we can resolve. But uh, basically now, there is a dispute uh, in the area of Limbia, Dura, Lipulik, and Kalapani. It is very clear, and it is uh, reality and fact, that uh, the area, Libulik, Limpiadura, and 
Kalapani is the territory of Nepal, is very sacred part of Nepal. But uh, Shugavali Shandi confined us at the, to the east of uh, Mahakali River. We accepted that. That was the treaty accepted by both government, British uh, India and us. And for 146 years, 146 years, we, that territory was under our control. But in 1962, there, were, there was uh, Indian Army and uh, in Kalapani, and the area beyond Kalapani and uh, the Lipu Lake and Limpiadura were not in our use. So now we have to uh, talk thoroughly calmly, with evidences, with proofs, with history. And we are not in position to claim the territory of China or India. By size, by strength, by anything, we are not in position to claim. But we must claim our territory with our friends. How would you describe your relationship with India today? Very good far better than before. Before is when? Always. Okay. At the time of uh, British India, we had uh, fight. And uh, after that, we are gradually developing our friendship. And now, we are in the final stage of completing our ties to develop in a really new height or wider sense where there are no problems at all. And there shouldn't be any problem. Before there are so many there were so many problems. And uh, sometimes there were this type of that type of like uh, there were military security check posts in the northern border of Nepal uh, for many years. Because Matrika Prasad Koilala, when he became prime minister, immediately he visited India and he signed the agreement to install 17 about um, uh, security check posts in the northern border of Nepal, Indian check posts. That was completely. Now there are Chinese check posts. There is no chance for others. And as you ask, in the northern border, there are no Chinese check posts. And we don't allow any side. Chinese, we will not allow them to put their military check post in, inside our territory. Do you also have problems with your northern neighbor? Simply speaking, there are no problems. With China? With China, no problems. And with India also, so far I think. Now we have a small problem. That is Limpia Dora, Lipulik and Kalapani problem. That will be resolved in the year 2021 will be the year where we can declare that between Nepal and India, there are no problems at all. Uh, some of the things that made headlines in 2020 uh, left a bad taste in the mouth of both the neighbors. In May last year, for instance, when the, when the virus was at its peak, uh, you were quoted as saying, uh, it has become very difficult to contain COVID-19 due to the flow of people from outside. The Indian virus looks more lethal than Chinese and Italian. You called it the Indian virus, no one else has. Do you still stand by those remarks, sir? No, I said that uh, because of open border. But you called it the Indian virus and not the Chinese virus, although the virus uh, uh, originated in from China. From China, one, one uh, student had come here and virus was found. 
But the, from India, because of open border, so many people were using that open border and they were coming Bringing inside. Bringing in the virus from China. Huh? Bringing in the Chinese virus into Nepal. Virus is nev never Chinese, never Indian. Okay. But from, from where they came, that was the story I told. Uh, also in the month of June, you, you said that the Indian embassy uh, in Kathmandu was hatching a conspiracy to remove you from office. Were you misquoted? Uh, do you think there was a misunderstanding? I said that not in an embassy, but uh, I said some corners of India or some elements of India are hatching some conspiracy maybe. And that was true. You can see the media of that time, how media was, Indian media was explaining and giving the news and analysis, etc. And uh, the presentation of Indian media was, of some of the Indian media, not all, uh, were not positive. So was uh, this was this directed at the Indian media? You're saying the Indian media was banned? Not only media. Not only media. It was reflected in the media, right. but you can see the, inter, uh, the interviews of articles of the intellectuals, yeah. analysts, and others. Right. As the representative of media here, I'm not going to defend media that that bases their reports on uh, on baseless stories. Uh, but just like there are all kinds of leaders, there are all kinds of media. Some are good. Some are not so good. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice of you to be uh, talking and, and clarifying things. And I think there was the atmosphere was such it was so vitiated. For instance, your your comments on uh, uh, on the birth anniversary of the Nepalese poet uh, Bhanu Bhakt, who translated Valmiki's Ramayana into mm. Nepalese. Um, you said Nepal has become a victim of cultural en encroachment and its history has been manipulated. These are very loaded uh, words, sir, and uh, they do have a reaction. Uh, is Nepal's culture then under attack, and by whom? <laughs> uh, firstly, this is not a political matter. This is a matter of discussion, research, findings about our civilization and development of our civilization and industry. It's also an emotional matter. I think that's why the reaction yeah, is emotional. Yeah. Why I spoke those facts at that time? Facts. Why I choose that time? The selection of time, why was that? Uh, I request my friends, brothers and sisters to understand both things. One, this is not politics. This is historical fact. So, uh, if you don't mind, we have to keep our mind open. Whether Faizabad is Ayodhya Puri, or we have to find the real Ayodhya Puri. Where is Ayodhya? And there is no necessary to attack on me because uh, whatever facts on the point of view of uh, religion or faith or truth, that is not political part, another part. I was speaking on the uh, board day of uh, pioneer poet Banavakta. And why Vanuvakta was uh, famous in Nepal? Because he wrote Ramayana. He translated Valmiki's Ramayana, as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And he wrote also, to some extent he wrote. To some extent he translated. Not exactly translated, but... Uh, he wrote his own versions. Uh, own versions also. Anyway, he translated. Why Ramayana was translated or written? Because of Balmiki Ramayana, Rama. So, 
वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट भानुभक्त ही वॉज फेमस फॉर ट्रांसलेटिंग वाल्मीकि रामायण वाल्मीकि रामायण वॉज रिटर्न अबाउट राम लक्ष्मण सीता दशरथ एट्सेट्रा शो देर वॉज कनेक्शन एंड देर आर सो मेनी बुक्स बुक्स रिटर्न बाय द इंडियन राइटर्स ऑथर्स स्कॉलर्स Among them, one is Kitne Pakistan, which was awarded by Academy Prize from the government of India, which was led by Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji in 2000. I've not read Kitne Pakistan, but I've read Valmiki Ramayan. Uh, and uh, well, the question of you there—you don't want to dwell on it. But but you're talking about uh, Nepal's history and and cultural glory, and I don't I don't know or I don't I'm not sure who's trying to undermine it, sir. Uh, but but the sense one gets is that uh, you celebrate Nepal's history by uh, by painting one of your neighbors as the villain, and it no, has no, been no, no, it no. has been said. No, no, uh, you, let, you, you are not. Um, uh, excuse me. In this point, uh, you did not understand uh, me exactly what I said. Right. I am talking not only about the glorious past of Nepal and the ancestors of Nepali. I am talking about uh, Bhaskara Chari, who discovered about the theory of gravitation mm. and. Uh, it was eleven hundred fifty A.D. and uh, his book Siddhanta Sirumani was published in twelve um, hundred ten, and Newton found that theory some five hundred years. Late. This is the first time I've heard of this. Oh, me too. I studied in my course books when I was child that uh, the theory of gravitation was found by Newton, and before him, Galileo and others. But that is not true. Let's talk about uh, what's happening in Nepal, and uh, as as I said, very interesting political situation here. How do you describe? Right now, your relationship with uh, Pushp Kamal Dehel. Very good question. <laughs> I'm glad you liked one. Hey. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, Pushp Kamal Dehel, his background, his history, their activities are not uh, exactly democratic one. You partnered with him. Formed a government with him, not once but twice, even after knowing all of this. Yes, I am telling you. I am telling you for that, from where I brought him, and I join hand with him to promulgate the constitution. His character is unstable. That is one fact. I was careful about his character. and instability would be the consequences of his character when you took oath in 2018 nepal had something or your government had something that nepal had not seen since the 1950s a stable government with a two thirds majority and then you decided to dissolve the house and your decision has been called a lot of things i'm just quoting these are not my words irresponsible unconstitutional undemocratic a constitutional coup this is how your critics have described your decision so how do you describe yours first of all i want to ask you what is the meaning of coup how those people are describing the dissolution of the parliament is a coup coup d'etat what kind of analysis is this do they understand in fact the meaning of coup 
or they ju just want to uh, criticize the government and defend the government. But, but you are the member of the House of Representatives. Yeah. You've dissolved that house. Yeah. So you're not a member of the house anymore because the house doesn't stand according to you. Yeah. And yet you remain the prime minister. Yeah. And you also, after dissolving the house, expand your council of ministers. Yeah. Is that, does that, that is, add up? That is, that is constitutional. Okay. There are different constitutions in the world. Uh, India has her own constitution. America, China, Pakistan, other countries have their own constitution and we have our own constitution. Since uh, the 1990s, Nepal has seen no government which has completed a five-year term. That's almost 30 years. And now... The yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, this time also, I was hoping and I was trying my best to continue the government for five years term. But unfortunately, some people, ambitious people from my party, they create such a situation where they wanted to push the country towards instability. Is the Nepal Communist Party now a divided house, sir? Or are you going to contest the next, next election together as, as one single entity? Uh, I'm surprised with their uh, different expressions and uh, different activities. I am surprised because uh, I called the Central Committee meeting, they were absent and I found them in the street. They went to election commission, claiming that they are the real party. They never asked me, even a single time. So you will not contest the election with them? The party is divided? I have not declared that. Their position are still there in my party. My second chairman is Pushpa Kamal Dal, even now. Senior leaders are Jalan Khanal and Madhav Nepal, and even now. Will you contest the election with them? It's not sure, because in Hindi there is a saying that... So there is a possibility, you are saying. If you're not sure, means it can happen. Yes, if they come... After e everything? Even then, I can pardon them. The more interesting part is that... Uh, Beijing apparently is very keen on keeping this party together. Uh, there have been reports that the Chinese representative in Kathmandu has held meetings between the warring factions of your party to hold them together, which is, uh, which is also unheard of since we are talking about things that I've never heard of before. I, I have not, never heard of a diplomat uh, trying to keep the government of another country together and openly holding meetings. Then we had a high-profile visit from Beijing. Gu Yezu, a vice minister of the International Department of the Chinese Communist Party, also visited Nepal right after your announcement to dissolve uh, the house and had a meeting with you also. We love our independence. We love our freedom. And we don't want to be instructed or guided by others. And we do not follow the instructions by others. We independently decide on our matters. This is split, that unity, and today's is, is split. Today's is split is done by Mr. Pushpakamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal, etc. And that unity was done by me and Pushpakamal Dahal. So, we love our independence and freedom to decide on our internal affairs. And we don't want any type of interference from outside, from north or south, remainings of such contradiction may exist even now. They have to resolve. And if we can, and if we can be instrumental, we are ready for that. You're offering to resolve differences between India and China. Yeah, if we can be instrumental to support them, help them to resolve the problems, we are ready. Uh, another point of contention, of course, has been Chinese investments in Nepal. As everywhere else in the world, there have been concerns that have been expressed. And I understand that as a developing country, or any developing country, needs money, needs infrastructure. 
uh, and need someone to to steer those projects. But uh, the so-called debt trap from China is is a concern elsewhere. Do you feel? Do you share those concerns, sir? Some two years ago, when I was in USA, at that time also I was asked about uh, debt trap. And I told them, we are concentrating our efforts on economic development. Uh, and our efforts, our resources are not enough. We want to get support, we want to get investment, sometimes loans too, for some projects, but carefully. Uh, we do not uh, do like that, uh, as it is said, Rinam Kirtwa Agritam We don't do that. Taking loan and drinking ghee, uh, that's not our principle. And uh, yes, we have to take some loan also. We have to take some grant also. Are you not worried that that money comes with strings attached? I don't think so, because uh, as we are getting loan from others, similarly we are getting loans from China also. And that is not that much huge amount, and that is not in such, a, uh, such areas where we cannot get back. We invest in such areas where we can get back those monies. So you will limit your uh, yeah. dependence on yeah. Chinese money? Yeah. Sure. In construction, they do. Uh, they compete. If they were awarded, then they uh, do that work. And uh, Anavaras, that is simple thing. That is no question of uh, debt trap, etc. You've been very patient, sir. You've been quite a sport. You've taken all the questions. And, um, and as they say, the, the thing about good neighbors is that they don't let their differences turn into disputes. I hope India and Nepal can continue in that spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course, um, uh, neighbors shouldn't hide anything. Neighbors should openly speak about their problems, feelings, their sentiments with their neighbors and share and uh, try to resolve those things amicably and uh, with mutual benefit, we believe that. And uh, we are not in sentiment. We are in reality and on the real basis, we want to really resolve if there are any problems, if appear any problems, we want to resolve and develop our friendship in a newer height. Yes. You said 2021 yes. will be the year when India and Nepal will yeah. have no differences. I'll, I'll come and yeah. see you in 2022 and, yes, and we can revisit this conversation. I, I believe that 2021 will be the year where we can declare that there are no problems between our two countries, Nepal and India. Look forward to that. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Global Leadership Series, powered by Neom. It's time to draw the line. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.